My first guest tonight is TV presenter and researcher into the world of female divinity, Shilpa Mehta. Hello, Shilpa. Hello, Sarah, sweetheart. How are you? Very well, very good, well. Good, good. Now, I believe your first job was in recycling. Uh, it, it wasn't a job. It was when I left university. Yeah. So um, I left university and worked in an office, you know, trying to decide what my next thing would be. And yeah. all this paper was being wasted. And I got really passionate about saving trees because I thought, this is paper. It's Are you an eco-warrior? I'm a warrior of all the best <laughs> kinds, really. So I phoned up. Um, I looked up in the yellow pages to see if somebody could come and recycle all this paper, and it wasn't happening. Oh, so really? this was at the beginning of the 90s, yeah, so I thought I'll set up a business. And I did that for two years. Oh, wow. So how did that so lead to radio? You went from it, well, it, to radio, it didn't you? really lead to radio. I mean, I don't, I, th I mean, in my career, I kind of quantum leap. You know, I do one thing that's totally unrelated, then I go somewhere else and do something completely different. But when I went to see the BBC, they did say, oh, you've run your own business, and that means that you've got the flair, you know, to do radio. If you've got the guts to do that, you can do radio. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe I should set up a business for a bit of radio. Uh, now, your first appearances on TV involved a current heartthrob, old Mr. Vaughan. Yes, Johnny Vaughan. <laughs> what was Vaughan. all that about? How, I mean, what was and that? we were talking about sex as well. Really? <gasps> that was the programme. It was a Channel 4 education programme about sex for oh, teenagers. Yeah. And uh, he was the presenter and I was the presenter of that. And that was quite... Is he fun quite... to work with? Bit of a live We worked wire. quite separately, so... But, I mean, he's very strong. I mean, he's very strong in front of the mm. camera. He knows what he wants to do, and, you know, he's very clear. But then I had to... When I did radio, I had to produce him as well, because I'm a radio producer as well. And I oh. used to produce a programme for The Guardian, and he was the presenter. So I've kind of come across Johnny in all these different situations where we're, like, different roles to each other. And you're a woman of many talents, obviously. Yes, multifaceted. Uh, now, you, you have done a lot of travelling with Lonely Planet, I think the envy of a lot of people. What, it just seems like such a great job. Uh, what was your favourite place? So far as a country, um, well, actually, I just got back from Australia and I really enjoyed Australia in terms of my personal experience of being there. Um, but Bali, I thought, was a fantastic culture because mm. it's a little Hindu island. You know, it's very, um, it's very beautiful, it's very tranquil. And they play this Balinese music, gamelan music, which is very trippy. So you just, it's very serene. You just feel like you're in this dream. And beautiful flowers just fall, you know, from these perfect trees. And did you, go, got did, this did you do the kind of the Alex Garland beach thing and go away from all the tourist areas and go? And find yourself a deserted beach and uh, not really actually it wasn't is the Bali beach very touristy or not a lot of Australians go there so oh, really? for Australians it's their Greece or their Spain because right. they can just pop over from that'd there. be nice wouldn't it <laughs> <Maybe I should laughs> a, lot of, a lot of surfers but you can get away from all of that if you don't want to be around you know European people what's been your least favorite place uh, we did another Indonesian island called Sulawesi which was a Muslim island, um, and I didn't enjoy that as much because in Bali, all the Hindu women are very feminine, and they wear these like lace see-through tops with their sarongs, and they go to temple like this, and it's oh, a wow. very, it's a very sexy feminine culture. Whereas this other island was very uh, masculine, and all the girls wore jeans and t-shirts and had to cover up, and and it and it was dirty. So all those places where you have to cover up. Like I in didn't. the Middle East, a lot of tourists are told to cover up before they yeah. go. Even Turkey, yeah, they're told to do that. Here, it wasn't that strict. I mean, you have to watch yourself a little bit, and and that's one of the things when you travel. It's quite interesting to see. You know, can I be a woman here or can I not? Yeah. You know. Is there anywhere that you would like to have gone that you've missed out on? Is there anywhere left? Well, am I about to die or something? So <laughs> I've got the rest of my I've life. Got a time yeah. limit. On your show, but time limit. <laughs> um, I'd really like to check out. Uh, the North and the South Pole, so go to really? places. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? Because it's, it's the one place in the world where there's no buildings, there's no roads. There's no nothing. There's, there's, she wants there's snow. landscape. I want to see that because I love nature and I want to see landscape. There's a lot of snow, I hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you get involved in the alternative health scene? Um, how did I get involved in it? It's just something I've been interested in because mm. uh, my mum's always, you know, when we were little and we got ill, she would like rub some herbs into my stomach. And that would be so. Really? She she had she's got all that sort of hocus pocus going on anyway. Do you believe? So. I mean, do you, are you a believer? You don't need to believe for alternative health. I but think. do you think that? I mean, obviously, you know, science has given us medicine, and that we know that works. Do you think that that herbal medicine, totally. alternative medicines, do work? Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Very much so. So I was never given a paracetamol if I was sick. Really? Yeah, my mum would massage my head, or she would, you know, 
she would try out different things because that's all her her knowledge. Has that been your part of your, that was your part of your culture as you grew up? Yeah, well, part of my not Indian culture, part of my mum's particular kind of take on things. <laughs> so she's your mum's <laughs> personal culture. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm building my own personal culture too, and that involves alternative health because I just think it's it's really fun, it's really easy. You know, I don't really believe in aspirin culture at all. What's worked for you most? Do you think flower remedies? Flower remedy. Yeah. Oh yes, rescue yes. remedy. Rescue. I swear by my rescue remedy. It's a very good remedy, and there's all different ones, so you can take them if you're, you know, if you're feeling scared of failure, if you're totally exhausted. Really? Yeah, emotional. You can something yes. to solve the emotions. Yes, and if you're an emotional person like I am, and I'm sure you are, and most people are. Well, we're girls. Then, then you can <laughs> take um, a flower remedy to just balance you out, and it's really good. Really helps. Uh, now you describe yourself as a 21st century girl. Yes, uh, at the moment. <laughs> at, the, at the moment. What do you mean by that? Because I think I talk about things that are of the future, you know, I think I talk about alternative travel, alternative health, alternative spirituality. I mean, I'm not scared of those subjects I, and I think it's very 21st century. What do I have to so, do to become a 21st century girl? It's got a nice ring to it. Um, Someone's got to write a song called 21st century girl. Yes, yeah. I think to become a 21st century girl, you've got to be really sure of yourself. Right. And you've got to and you've got to believe um, in your soul and in your spirit, and that that's what's going to get you through life. Have I just got to be a bit of a hippie? Totally. <laughs> and wear fishnet tights. That. Okay, I'm, I'm out <laughs> to buy those tomorrow, and I should be buying my yoga book as well. Uh, now, PMT, premillennial tension, is the subject of the Big End, the new series that you're doing. What's all that about? It's looking at how how people are freaking out now that it's the millennium and the kind Aren't of things. Aren't they just? Already we're getting up to. I know, and we're only like a few days into it's, it. It's the first week of January. I know people are going mad. It is crazy. It is crazy. And you know, this morning I was talking about um, on, on another program about millennium holidays, and we've just had our New Year's Eve, and we're already talking about 1999. Uh, yeah, that's this morning. So you still do that? Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, very good. Yes. Well. Um, so this program is is looking at people who have various kind of way out beliefs. So I've interviewed a vampire. And she really was quite frightening, actually, but she was a very nice person. Did she didn't go for the throat? No, she's, <laughs> she doesn't attack people, but she does take... She's, she was a lesbian vampire as well, and she took blood off her partner. You know, they cut each other and ate blood. I don't... Well, she says, don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> and I've interviewed another guy who um, was really into tantric sex. Like Sting? Is, yeah, sting but this, like that, don't this guy was like a gay male escort as well. So it was all kind of a bit s and me and tantric and it's very interesting because people are tying up what they want to do mm. with, with these sort of spiritual beliefs as well. It's quite funny to see, you know, an s and dungeon with somebody talking about, you know, how important it is spiritually. It's quite a funny juxtaposition. Did they frighten you at all? No. I love it, Sarah. I love it. It's like, well, it's interesting. People, it's interesting when people are saying things that go beyond the norm, you know, and I find that really fascinating. So, uh, what do you see ahead of us as we turn into the next century? You know, I mean, are we uh, spiritually, where do you think people are going and regarding health? Just with health or with everything? Or with spiritually and with health? And um, spiritually and with health. I mean, I think it's getting better. I don't think it's getting worse. You oh, know? good. You've got an optimist. Oh, you? total optimist. Optimism is what gets me through. I really think that, you know, I think there's more light on the planet than there is darkness now. Mm. So I think we're actually, it seems confusing. We've got to get through this very confusing year. Mm. And then once we've got through that, I think we're going to enter into another threshold where we're just going to open up our consciousnesses and just be a bit more chilled out as human beings. Excellent. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to take that mantra. Thank you, Shilpa. And um, perhaps you'll tell us a bit more of the millennium th millennial thoughts uh, when we reach our millennium moment a little bit later in the show.